Hey everyone, this is Jared with The Hunt and Fool, and in today's episode, we're gonna talk about Idaho elk. We're just gonna do an overview on Idaho elk in general. As you know, Hunt and Fool here, we're all about trying to help our members and friends get tags, go on more hunts, share experiences. Idaho's been sort of a staple for that. And unfortunately in 2021, we kind of saw a massive shift in how they're allocating tags to non-residents. So I wanna run through that so that you're not caught unawares and you have an opportunity to take advantage of Idaho's system or what's left of it. We hope and, and think that they're probably going to modify it in 2022. Hint, hint, Idaho. So with that said, let's dive right in. First of all, we're gonna talk about elk zones. We're gonna talk about types of tags in Idaho. How do you get a tag in Idaho? What are the two systems? And then draw odds and draw processes. And finally, we'll talk about pricing. Um, when it comes to elk zones, Idaho has 28 different regions or zones that are uh, comprised of one to multiple game management units. It allows Idaho to manage them individually, uh, which is why they vary greatly in how the tags inside of them are allocated. In some cases, you might have two a general season archery and a general season uh, gun hunt. In others, you might have general archery and all gun hunts are controlled hunt only. So they do vary greatly in how the tags are allocated. Your tag is only valid in one zone, super important to note. And the question that uh, that begs is, can I switch the zones? And the answer in 2021 and beyond is probably not because the availability of tags to switch into has kind of just evaporated here this year. There's one exception to that, and that is if you draw a controlled permit. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about the draw. Idaho allocates their elk tags under two different types, A tags and B tags. And the best way to think about A tags is that A is for archery and therefore it's all about archery hunts. If you buy an A tag, the seasons in that zone are gonna favor archers and archery hunters. Conversely, B tags, not surprisingly, are all about any weapon, but it is important to note that auxiliary options can exist in both A and B tag zone or B tags. Uh, for example, A tags in the limb high zone may also include an antlerless elk hunt that's a centerfire weapon near agricultural fields. And it might also include a late muzzleloader hunt for antlerless elk, all with your A tag or your archery tag. So important to note what seasons are overlapping and what all weapons and hunts you can potentially have with your A or B tag. Now, the other type that's important to note are capped and zone quota tags. Cap tags have been around in Idaho for a long time. Idaho has used this to reduce hunter crowding in the more popular units. And in some cases, the cap applied to both residents and non-residents. And in other cases, it only applied to non-residents. But the short version is, it was a first come, first serve, and still is, uh, restriction on certain zones. So some zones still have these caps in place. For all the remaining elk zones in Idaho, they got introduced uh, uh, to a zone quota system this year. And it's similar to capped, but it has a fixed ratio of non-resident uh, hunters are allowed in these zone quotas, very fixed. Uh, and that was computed by looking at a five year look back period and taking the average number of non-residents as a percentage of total hunters in each of those zones and then averaging that out in zones that had greater than 15% participants as non-residents, they cut that all the way down to a 15% max. And that may not sound like a lot, but when you think about the fact that some of these zones had 50% non-resident participation, it really moved a lot of non-resident hunters around. In zones that had 10 to 14% historical participation, uh, that's been reduced to a 10% max for non-residents. And finally, those that were under 10% are capped at no more than 10%. The net effect, unfortunately, is that we lost 600 non-resident elk tags in the state of Idaho, um, that Idaho then turned around and made up for the loss in revenue by greatly raising prices in 2021. Again, something we'll talk about later on in the slides. All right, so let's talk about how do I get a tag. First of all, the OTC or over-the-counter method is a thing of the past starting here in 2021, particularly as it relates to these zone quotas. But we're still gonna call it that because Idaho also has a separate system that is a true draw for controlled permits. 
in the OTC system, tags went on sale 10 a.m. on December 1 on the website. And anybody who logged on and got into their own account was put into a big virtual waiting room. And then Idaho assigned random numbers to every to the thousands and thousands of people who were in those waiting rooms. And um, which is a draw, let's face it. It's not over the counter at that point, but uh, it's still different than their actual main draw. Then when your number finally got selected, you had a short window of time to select your hunt and check out of the website. And unfortunately, Idaho's website wasn't ready for that traffic. It was a terrible experience. I spent hours on it myself and uh, lots and lots of lost opportunities because people timed out, got kicked out and never got the tags they wanted. The worst part about all of this, in our opinion here at Hunt and Fool, is we're all about, you know, party applications because generally speaking, when you travel as a non-resident to hunt, you wanna bring friends, family, whatever. And Idaho created a draw that completely ignored the opportunity for uh, friends and family to hunt together. So one friend would get a Lemhi tag and the other friend, uh, they were sold out by the time they got them because of this random draw that Idaho created in the virtual waiting room. So we're hoping 2022, Idaho's listening, but in the short term, something to be very cognizant of, particularly if you want a party hunt opportunity. All right, let's talk about the draw a little bit. Uh, all applications for elk controlled hunts need to be in by June 5th. Up to 10% of the total controlled hunts for elk can be issued to non-residents, no more than that. And then you do have to purchase a non-resident hunting license in order to apply, but you don't have to purchase an elk tag to apply. Uh, and that's important to note, particularly as it relates to this next bullet point, because you can apply for a permit in any zone you want, even if you have a tag for a different zone. Remember earlier I said you can't trade zones. So this is the one exception is that if I do buy an elk tag early and I'm in a zone, a different zone that I want to apply for a controlled permit and maybe even a different weapon type, maybe I have an A tag and I want to apply for a B tag in a different zone, you can do that in Idaho. They make allowance for that. That point's important enough. We're gonna start the next slide off one more time with it and just remind you that you can apply for a permit in any zone, even if you have a tag for a different zone. If you do have a tag and draw a permit in a different zone uh, and or for a different weapon type, you do have to decide which one you're gonna hunt. You, you can't hunt both. So you gotta do one or the other. And in order to do that, you either have to claim your permit by August 1st by purchasing a hunting or an elk tag, if you haven't already, or exchanging an existing elk tag into your appropriate zone. If you don't do that by August 1st, your permit goes back into a leftover drawing and you're out. All right, one thing I love about Idaho, I've been kind of bagging on them a little bit here, but the draw odds and draw processes are super simple and straightforward. This is because first of all, Idaho does not have a point system. All tags are issued through a random process. Second of all, Idaho only looks at first choices before they move on to look at second choices. In other words, if I get lucky and my random number is finally drawn and I pop up and they look and they look at my first choice and there's a permit available for that, they will award me that permit or remove it from the quota for the other people to apply for and I've got my tag. On the other hand, if there are no permits available for my first choice, my name immediately gets thrown out over into the second choices and none of those get looked at until everybody's first choice has been awarded. What this does is it makes it super easy and clean and straightforward to understand the draw odds and see yourself sort of in those odds. <clears throat> those odds range from super tough to draw tags down in the 1%, sub 1% range, all the way up into 30 plus percent. And it's important to note that Idaho has separate uh, weapon draws. So you've, you've got limited or controlled archery permits, controlled muzzleloader, controlled rifle or any weapon, short range. So if you study your draw odds carefully in each of those, you'll find that there's occasionally some sleepers where you have a great chance at harvesting an elk on a relatively easy, at, at least in terms of, the, of today's draws, uh, an easy permit to acquire. All right, when we talk about pricing, I wanna make it clear that this pricing is for an adult without any discounts. Idaho has disabled veteran discounts, youth discounts, and more. So I'm just strictly talking about an adult with no discounts. 
you'll have to have a $185 non-refundable hunting license, a $10 access and depredation fee, a $651.75 elk tag, an 82, almost $82 archery permit, and an $82 muzzleloader permit. In, and you need those in either case, if you're gonna hunt an archery only season, you have to have the archery stamp. If you're gonna hunt muzzleloader only, you gotta have a muzzleloader stamp. Um, so those are pretty expensive extra add-ons. And then if you apply in the draw for elk, it's an $18 controlled hunt application fee. Uh, we highly recommend if you go to Idaho and you're gonna spend all this money, you might as well put a wolf tag in your pocket because that's still a really good value at $31.75. And then finally, Idaho is gonna tack on a two and a half to 3% convenience fee for all of this as well. So Idaho has actually become one of the more expensive states as it relates to elk hunting, but they still issue a lot of tags. Uh, granted, the system was uh, less than ideal this year, but as an adventure, uh, adventurous outdoor western big game hunter you still can't afford to not have Idaho on your radar you're just gonna have to know what's gonna happen on December 1 when they go back into tag allocation mode for 2022 so anyway thanks for staying tuned we hope we can help you out and get you on more hunts uh, with friends and family and make memories in the field and we'd love for you to keep checking back to the YouTube channel for more information like this